All right. Let's get started. Lecture 18. We're, um, we're going to round up between today's lecture and the next lecture. We're going to finish up our, our, our discussion of rigid body systems because basically what we're talking about today and what we're talking about on, uh, on Wednesday is going to basically put a bow on everything that we've been talking about in terms of the definition of a moment. Um, if you remember in our discussion last time of forced couples, I said, you know, we're broaching a very, very important topic in statics, which is the idea of an equivalent system. And so today what we're going to do is, is uh, discuss that, discuss equivalent systems. Today's lecture is on equivalent force systems in 2D, and our next lecture is on equivalent force systems in 3D. So they're conceptually about the same concept, uh, just uh, ratcheting up the difficulty a little bit. Um, my TAs are, are currently working on getting caught up with all the grading. 3.2 is graded. Uh, the last two assignments are currently being graded, but the solution should be posted. Um, uh, hopefully we get those uh, knocked out pretty quickly. Uh, 3.5 is due today, and homework 3.6 uh, is, is the sign, you know, keep on chugging. Um, just so that you are aware, um, our next exam is scheduled for the 20th. Um, uh, I have a calendar in the, uh, the next set of slides, um, but we have our exam review on the 18th, uh, which is Monday, and then the exam is on Wednesday. So uh, just so you, if you want to mark that down on your calendar, and we're still uh, rocking and rolling with that. Okay, any questions? All right, usually the way that I um, uh, put together my slides, I have a series of slides that have you know, like lecture content, and then I have, you know, the final slide is sort of the example that we're doing in class today, and I think this lecture probably sets the record for the shortest amount of, or the shortest uh, presentation I put together, because there's only one slide, and then we get right into the example, so it's pretty, pretty quick. Um, but I want to set the stage of what we've been doing for the past few lectures to really dig into today's uh, concept, and really the best way to explore Today's concept of equivalent systems of forces is to just do it. So, um, but let me sort of explain. So, up until now, um, we are, you know, so we've been dealing with uh, uh, particle or statics of particles, and then we got into rigid body systems. I want to talk about particle statics for a second to sort of draw the corollary here. So, in particle statics land, we really did two things. Okay, we did two things. We did uh, resultants, okay? So let's, let's define what that is. Um, particle statics, we had a particle that had a bunch of forces on it, and so conceptually the first thing we wanted to do is, okay, what is the resultant of those forces? So if we have a particle that has a bunch of forces on it, let's turn that into a single force. And then the next thing we did is, okay, what are the forces required to keep that particle in equilibrium? That was, it was a second topic, right? It was a second idea, right? The first idea is, what's the resultant? And then the second idea is, what are the forces required to keep that in equilibrium? And then what we've been doing recently is we've been taking that concept and making it a little more challenging. What if the forces don't meet at a common point, okay? What if that's the case? Well, we still want to have the same overall strategy. The first topic is, can we take those systems of forces and resolve them into something simpler? Well, before we do that, we had to spend a few lectures defining what makes rigid body systems different. And what makes rigid body systems different is their tendency to rotate as opposed to translate. And that's where the definition of a moment came into play. Okay. So um, what I want to do now is close that loop on that first task, okay? And so what I mean is I propose that in uh, particle statics land, two equivalent systems are equivalent if the sum of forces in system one equals the sum of forces in system two. And for particle statics, that's all you need. But for rigid bodies, you got to have a little bit more. You got to have moments. I propose that two systems of forces are equivalent if the sum of forces in system one equals the sum of forces in system two and the sum of moments in system one equals the sum of moments in system two. And that's going to be how we close out this concept of rigid body systems. What we will then do next is we'll say, okay, 
if we're treating these rigid body systems as if they're static, then both the sum of forces and the sum of moments must be equal to zero, okay? And if that's the case, what are the external forces required to keep that system in equilibrium? We call those forces reactions, you know, Newton's third law. A reaction has an equal and opposite reaction. So basically the idea is we put forces on a system, what are the external reaction forces required to keep that system in equilibrium? So the point I'm making mathematically is right now we're just saying that these two systems are equivalent. Later on, we'll set those forces and moments equal to zero. So don't yet sum these, uh, set these sums equal to zero. We will do that later. But again, the idea is to take our systems and simplify them. Okay, And that's what I kind of want to talk about today is simplifying systems of forces. So in order to discuss that, I need to have an example of a system that isn't so simple. Okay, So here's the system we're going to look at today. And I've got four different forces. Um, I've got four tugboats. Each of these tugboats are exerting a 5,000 pound force on this larger cruise ship. Okay, So here's this cruise ship. And I've got you know, this boat, this boat, this boat, and this boat are all applying a 5,000 pound force to the boat, okay? So I want to determine an equivalent force couple system at point zero, okay, um, which is this point right here. Um, and then the second question is, and it's worded a little strangely, and, 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 and I admit it's a little strangely. This is actually an edit I made to the, uh, the notes today to kind of clear this up, is where should a single more powerful tugboat uh, push the cruise ship to produce the same effect as the original four, okay? And so what that second part is basically asking is where do I put the resultant force vector to produce the resultant moment? That probably doesn't make a lot of sense right now, and it probably seems real involved. Don't worry, it's not bad. This is actually pretty straightforward. What you will find with this problem is that it is incredibly systematic. It's incredibly mechanical. You know, you will... You know, there's a process, you follow that process, uh, and, and it works out uh, pretty effectively uh, in the end. I'm going to give everybody a sec to copy this down. Uh, I'm going to pull up my notebook, though. You know the drill. I have this also in, in our course notebook, and then we'll get right to it. So give me one second. <clears throat> okay. Okay. Let me get this out of the way. I'm going to give everybody a sec to copy this down, because um, this is a very, very straightforward process. Um, and I want you to sort of digest what's going on here. It's really not bad. I'm also going to use this example to um, uh, sort of introduce a, um, uh, an engineering term. I don't think we've used all that much in here. Uh, and it's going to be very, very uh, important to making the numbers and some of our problems a bit more manageable. Especially for you civil engineers in the room, you will use this term uh, quite a bit. I'll give you a sec to copy all this down. All right. Are we good so far? Okay. I want to begin this problem by um, bringing up a couple facts before we begin. Um, the first thing I want to bring up is this concept. Let me get my mouse pointer here out of the way. The first thing I want to bring up is this concept of a kip. Does anybody remember how a kip is defined? Anybody remember that? How much, uh, what is a kip? Anybody remember this? A kip is a shorthand term that means 1,000 pounds. I can write that a little better. So what I'm getting at is that for each of these tugboats, instead of saying they have a magnitude of 5,000 pounds, I'm going to say they have a magnitude of five kips. Okay, Just makes the vectors a little smaller, makes them a little easier to put in my calculator, et cetera, et cetera. Um, 
the other thing that I want to recall is the, uh, the magnitude of a moment in two dimensions, okay? And if you remember, we had a formula for that, and we said it was Rx Fy minus Ry Fx. Okay? Do you remember that formula? So I, I'm, I'm going to be doing a lot of cross products theoretically, but because we're dealing in two dimensions, I can simplify those cross products a little bit to use that formula. Don't worry. We're going to be uh, uh, exploring that a little bit later. Okay. All right. Now, before I begin uh, uh, actually getting into the math, I want to illustrate what's going on here. I have a boat, okay, subjected to a series of forces. Okay, I'm going to scroll down a little bit to sort of illustrate what's going on here. Okay, so here's the boat. I got lazy and copied it again. Okay, and I want to name this system. Okay, I propose that we should call this system system one. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to see if I can come up with another system that is equivalent and a little simpler. Okay? And in order to do that, I'm going to need a few things. Okay? The first thing that I'm going to need is I'm going to need to, number one, write out each individual force vector in IJ notation. Okay? And I'm saying, uh, first off, I'm saying IJ notation because uh, it's two-dimensional. If this was a 3D problem, I'd write it out in IJK, but I, I think you all get that. Okay. <clears throat> So how many forces do we got? One, two, three, four forces. Okay? Let's just do it numerically. Let's start off with force one. Okay? So force one. Now let's see if we can do this all in one step. Let's see if we can do this in one step. So a pile of junk times I plus a pile of junk times J. Let's see if we can do this in our heads. Okay? All right. Let's start off. Uh, let's look at force one. Force one is uh, here on this top left corner of the boat. Uh, it's at an orientation of 60 degrees from the horizontal, and it's sort of pointing to the right and down. Okay? So I'll do, uh, I'll do this one, and maybe you can help me out with some of the later ones. Okay? So first off, I propose that this component is positive, and this component is negative. Why? Because it's pointing to the right and it's pointing down, okay? Now the orientation is defined by 60 degrees, so I propose what we would do is put the cosine of 60 degrees here and the sine of 60 degrees here, but I'm forgetting something. If I were to just compute that vector, that vector would have a magnitude of 1. Because that's just the orientation. I need to include the magnitude. Now, what is the magnitude of each of these four tugboats? 5,000 pounds or five kits. So what I will do is I will say five kits. Five kits. Apologies if that's a little cramped there. But do you kind of got the idea of what I'm doing here? So help me. So I, I tell, I'll do this one, and then you can help me out with the next one. So I propose that F1 is going to be, let's see, 2.5i plus, and then this is going to be negative, and it's sine of third or sine of 60 degrees isn't um, uh, a nice pretty number like two and a half. It's 4.330j. Okay, and to be clear. This is in kips. 
Would you agree that that would be an adequate way of describing tugboat one in terms of its forces? Is that okay? Okay. <clears throat> now, let's look at tugboat two. I love this problem because there's different ways of defining each of the tugboats. So help me out with this. First off, what's the magnitude of the tugboat? Five. All right. What about the signs? Is this positive or negative? Is this positive or negative? Negative. Okay. So we're going to have positive five kips here negative five kips here, but we got to multiply it by something. That something's going to indicate its orientation. Okay? Now, the orientation of boat two is defined not by an angle, but by a slope ratio, right? Now, there's a couple ways you could go about this. You could say, okay, I have a three to four slope ratio. So if I take the inverse tangent of four over three, the inverse tangent of four over three will give me the angle, and then I can take sine cosine of that angle, and, and I'll be rocking and rolling, okay? I'm lazy. I don't want to do that, okay? So if this is 3, 4, what's the hypotenuse? 5. So let's break out Sakatoa. I propose that the X component is going to be adjacent over hypotenuse, opposite over hypotenuse for the Y component. And if you don't believe me, Test, my, test me out. How do you determine this angle? How do you determine that angle? Take the inverse tangent of 4 over 3. Okay, take the inverse tangent of 4 over 3. And then take cosine and sine of that angle. You will get 0.6 and 0.8. It's so simple. So that has less error, in my opinion, associated with it. Now this math I think I can do in my head. This is 3i plus negative 4j. And again, in kits. I'm going to stop for a second, see if that makes sense. Everybody okay with that? All right. <clears throat> Help me out. Can somebody tell me what is the description of tugboat 3 going to be? Shouldn't need to do much math for that one. Zero and negative five. Zero I minus five J. Everybody okay with that? That's exactly right. No X component. And the Y component is going downward. Okay, finally, F4, okay? What do we got going on with F4, okay? F4 is this tugboat right here, okay? That tugboat is going up and to the right. So what are the deal with my components? Are there positives, negatives? What's the deal with the signs? They're both positive, right? And so that's a 45-degree angle measured from the horizontal, uh, remember, if it's 40, regardless of what axis, 45, 45, so. That's loud. <laughs> I was going to say it's Halloween. It's not like the Texas Chainsaw Massacre going on outside the class or anything, is it? Goodness. Are they remaking a scene from the Evil Dead out there? Okay. All right. <laughs> okay, so 
you know that the cosine and the sine of 45 degrees are the same, so what is 5 times the cosine of 45? Somebody help me out. 3.54. So I have a second on that? Okay. So what I, I think I wrote three decimal places, although it really doesn't matter. Okay, before we move on, uh, is everybody okay with doing that for force vectors? Whether they're defined by angles, whether they're defined by slope ratios, or whether they're like force vector 3 where we just looked at it. That should be hopefully pretty straightforward in two dimensions. Now in three dimensions, we might have to write a distance vector, convert it to a unit vector, multiply it by a magnitude, but by and large, the process should be pretty, you know, similar. Everybody okay with this? Okay. All right. Now, again, I want you to just keep in mind this is system one. Okay. Now, the next step, this is step one. Okay. Now, the next step, and again, I'm going to be kind of, I don't want to keep scrolling, you know, like crazy. Okay. So, I'm going to copy this image here. Again, you don't need to like recopy it on your calculations uh, there in your notebook. I'm just doing that here so that I don't have to keep scrolling back and forth, you know, and making you all dizzy. So step two, so let me ask you this. Let's see if you could guess what step two is. This is a forces and moments problem, all right? You all know the formal definition for a moment. So I have an F vector for every force. What other type of vector do I need for every force? I'm thinking of how do you define a moment? R cross F. So what do I need for each vector? An R vector. I need an R vector for each uh, force. So we've got an F vector for every force. Let's get an R vector for each force. So, so step two is determine position vectors. This is statics, not dynamics. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't help it. I had to do that. <laughs> oh, you got to take the last one you can. Okay, so we're going to define the position vectors. And if you remember from the problem description, the problem description says we're trying to determine an equivalent system of this system of forces about point zero. Okay. So we're going to determine an equivalent um, system about point uh, zero or point O. So determine position vectors from the point in question. To each force. Now I'm curious before we start writing this. Here's this boat, and we're determining all this stuff about point O. Um, can anybody guess, like, why point O? Like, why would I be interested as an engineer or an analyst determining an equivalent system about that point? What makes that point so special? Maybe, it, maybe for this boat, that's the center of gravity of that boat? Maybe that is where the centroid of that uh, boat is. Spoiler alert, that's not where the centroid is. I can just look at it and tell you that's not where the centroid is. But after we finish exam two, we are going to learn how to compute the location of the centroid. So that's, you know, random stuff for later. Just making sure you have kind of an idea of what's going on. Okay. Now, let's look at each of these vectors. And let's see if we can determine an R or, uh, each of these tugboats. So let's see if we can determine an R vector for each of these. Now, what is an R vector? Let's see if we're clear. R vector starts at the point in question. So it starts at point O, and it points to the line of action of each force. Well, for this system, that's pretty easy, just like R1. Why is that so wavy? R1. That's R1 right there. 
That's R2. That's R3. That's R4. My art is horrible. So, but you get the idea. So R1. What is R1? If I go from 0 to tugboat 1, how much do I go along the x-axis? Negative 90. How about the y-axis? Is it positive 30? Oh, that's, that's a fair criticism. It's a 5. Yeah, <laughs> that's, a, that's a fair criticism there. So I propose then that R1 is negative 90i plus 50j. And to be clear, that's in feet. In fact, they're all going to be in feet. Okay. Okay. So let's see if we can do R2. Can somebody else do R2? What's R2 going to be? Anybody? 100i plus 50j. 100i plus, now is it 50? It's 70. There you go. That's yeah. Yeah, that I make sure you're paying attention to the scratch. That that's an easy one there to uh, to mix up. So 100 i plus 70j. Does everybody see that? Okay. So if that's R2, what about R3? Let's see. It's 70j. What's the um what's the x component going to be? 400. And for R4, one of the things I think this boat or this schematic doesn't really do a good job of illustrating, uh, but I can tell you it's true, is that it is symmetric about the, um, uh, the horizontal. So if this is plus 70, for R4, it's going to be minus 70. And so what's this X component going to be? 300. And so that we're clear, all of these are in feet. Hold on. Okay. <clears throat> what do you think? So far so good? Okay, so we've cataloged a lot of data. Let's see if we can simplify what we got going on here. Okay, so so I would say that a good definition for step three is evaluate R cross F. for each force and then some I'll say and some forces and moments okay now I'm an engineer and engineers like tables so we're going to draw a big old table here okay now, how many tugboats were there for this problem? Not one, not two, not three, but four, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a big old table. Okay. So there's one, two, three, four. Okay, four boats. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to write the position vector. And the position vector is measured in feet. Okay, and so what did we get? We got um, negative 90i plus 50j. We got 100i 
plus 70J. We got 400I plus 70J. And we got 300I minus 70J. Now, I'm going to write the force vector for every boat. Hold on. And these are measured in kips, okay? So we had 2.5i minus 4.330j. We had 3i minus 4j. We had 0i minus 5j. And we had 3.536i plus 3.536j. And so what we now need to do is for each of these compute R cross F. Okay? And in terms of units, this is going to be measured in foot kips. All right? So the way that we're going to do this is we're just going to say, all right, this first one is just R1 cross with F1. So what are we going to do? We're going to take R cross F. Now, how did we, what was our shorthand way of doing that? What was it? It was Rx Fy minus Ry Fx. So I want somebody to do this for that first top row. Okay, I want you to take R cross with F, so the top R, the top F. I want you to tell me what you're getting for a moment. We'll say just like one decimal place to keep it simple. <coughs> so what you're going to do is you're going to take the negative 90 times the negative 4.33 minus the 50 times the Anybody have a value for that? Yes. 264.7. Do I have a second on that? All right. Yeah, that's right. So from a vector notation, it's actually 264.7K. Okay? And I'm going to write it that way just so that we can have a corollary for 3D problems. But yeah, that's your problem right there. That's your answer right there. So if that's the case, what about the next row? So the next row is going to be Rx times Fy, so that's negative 400, minus Ryfx, so that's 210. So negative 400 minus 210 is negative 610K. Is that a fair statement? For this row, Rx times Fy, that's negative 2,000. And then the other terms are going to give you zero, so that's negative 2,000K. And for this one, we're going to have this times that minus that times that. I'll do that one for you. That's going to be 1308.1. That one's positive. What do you think? So far so good? All right. I'll give you a sec to copy this down because I want everybody to pay attention to what's coming next.
So far so good? Okay. Now, I said that what I'm going to do is sum the forces and the moments. So I'm going to represent that down here below with a Greek letter sigma. So whenever you see the capital E looking thing, that's our uh, shorthand for a sum. And we're going to sum the forces and the moments. Okay. Now for the forces, what we're going to do is sum up all the I components and then sum up all the J components. So for the I components, 2.5 and 3 gives you 5.5, 5.5 and 0 gives you 5.5, 5.5 plus this gives you, what is that, uh, maybe like 9.04, is that a fair statement for I? If that's the case, what's the J component going to be? So negative 4.33, negative 4, negative 5, and this. Anybody have an answer? Negative 9.79. Do I have a second? All right. So minus 9.79J. Okay. And over here, if I sum up all those moments, what am I going to get? I'm going to erase this down here. We don't need that. Anybody got an answer over here? Don't be shy. Negative 1037.2. Do I have a second? Okay. So this is negative 1037.2K. I propose that what that means is this. That, let me, if you don't mind, I'm going to scroll a little bit. That my resultant vector is this, bless you, and my moment is this, okay, this is in kips, this is in foot kips, and Barring my incredibly horrible artistic skills here in a second. If here's the boat, and this right here is point O, that what I can do is instead of all those tugboats, Instead of all those tugboats, what I can do is replace them with two vectors. A vector going like this, and I will say that this is R, why did I draw it in that direction? Because it's positive along the x-axis, negative along the y-axis, so it should go down like that. And for the moments, now I have a moment vector, it is negative, right? The z-axis is pointing out of the screen, right? So negative moments, so, so positive moments out of the screen would be what? Counterclockwise, right? This is a negative moment. So it's going clockwise. 
So I now have a moment of, all right, hold on. Of 1037.2. I propose that we can have a name for this system. This can be system two. And system one and system two are both equivalent in the sense that the sum of forces in system one equals the sum of forces in system two, and the sum of moments in system one equals the sum of moments in system two. Instead of four boats, I just have two vectors. Okay? Now, we're not done with this problem, but does this concept kind of make sense? I mean, where did I come up with this R vector? I didn't just miracle that onto the screen. I took each of the force vectors, and I added them up. The sum of the forces in system one is that, which is what I put on system two. Where did I come up with that moment vector? I didn't just miracle that. I took the moments about all of those forces about that point. This is the sum of moments in system one. So this is an equivalent representation that meets both force and moment uh, uh, equivalency. Does that make sense? Now, let's go back to that statement at the beginning. Now, before I uh, uh, scroll up, does everybody have this? Now, I want to read this statement again up here. It says, where should a single more powerful tugboat push the ship to produce the same effect as the four original tugboats? So, when it said single more powerful tugboat, it's talking about the R vector, because that R vector, if you go back down here, that R vector has more up to it than the four individual tugboats. Like the four individual tugboats have a magnitude of five kips. I guarantee you that has a magnitude of much larger than five kips. Okay? Now it's asking where should I put that resultant to generate the same moment. Okay? What I propose is this. Okay? We're looking basically at a third system, and the third system basically would be the R vector only. And let me explain what that means. Let's look at system two. System two has a force vector and a moment vector. The moment vector is wanting to spin this way, right? Okay? I propose that what we could do is this. All right, so here's the boat. Let's say that's the center line of the boat. And let's say that this is point O, okay? Now remind me, this dimension right here is 70 feet, right? Okay? I propose what we can do is instead of a force and a moment, let's just take the resultant and put it like somewhere right here. Okay? And what do you mean, like, what, what do you mean, Dr. Mike, like, just put it right there? What is, what's the deal with right there? I propose that this is the magic location such that if I put this force right here and I look at how much moment it is generating about point O, it is generating 1037.2 foot kips of moment about point O. So how do I figure that out? Well, I need an R vector. I need a position vector. So for this, what do I know? I know my moment 
is negative 1037.2 K. I know that my force vector in this case is that, which is 9.04 I minus 9.79 J. And as for my position vector, what I'm going to do is I'm going to say that that's Rx times I plus 70 times J. Because I know that from here to here, I go up 70. I just don't know how far this is. I don't know this dimension. I don't know that. But I can solve that pretty easily because... R cross F is what? Rx times negative 9.79 minus 70 times 9.04, right? So what is this? Negative 9.79 Rx minus... What is that? That ends up being something like 632.8. That needs to contribute, that needs to generate the same amount of moment as my moment vector. 10 or negative 1037.2. So can somebody solve this equation and tell me what is Rx? Let me scroll down a little bit so you can kind of see what I'm doing. So how do I do that? I add 632.8 over there and divide by negative 9.79. Anybody have an answer? 41.31. There you go. 41. I heard multiple people say it, so I know that's right. 41.31 feet. Okay, so I propose the following. Here's my boat. That is so hard to draw. Here's point O. I propose that you can place that resultant vector along the top of that boat, specifically 41.31 feet away from O, and this is now a third system that is equivalent to the previous two, right? The sum of forces in the X and Y direction is the same for this system as it is for system two, because all I did was move this. And if you take the moment about point O for this, because keep in mind this dimension here, that dimension there is 70 feet. If you take the moment, RxFy minus RyFx, if you take the moment here, you will get negative 1037.2. So the question was, where do you place a single more powerful tugboat to generate the same system of forces? Right there. Does that make sense? If you understand that, then I think your homework will be a breeze. That's all I have, everybody. I will see you all on Wednesday.